today I want to take a look at this Sans Digital 4 Bay NAS. I don't actually know what model number this is because it doesn't say it on it. And the eBay auction is sold. I don't know what it was called on the auction. Maybe we'll find out when we get in there. And it's kind of hard to uh, find any, any information on this device. I can find the more modern version of this unit, which is black. And uh, yeah, nothing on this one. So uh, this is just four drives, serial ATA. It's got um, power and hard drive light and it just a power button on the front. This does not work. I plugged it in and it just won't boot. I believe it did at some point, but when I got this thing, it was in really bad shape. I got it really cheap and I actually really like Sans Digital stuff. I've had their two drive RAID, an external RAID, and it was great i mean i had that thing for a long time it was expensive it was like 200 bucks and you know it's without a drive two drives <laughs> but uh it was really really good the um uh, drive it's the unit itself had an lcd on the front you could configure the drives uh very easily with the user interface you could look at smart information it would warn you if there was a problem with the drive all sorts of stuff so it was actually a really nice unit, Firewire 800, USB, and E-Serial ATA. And I used that thing for a long time until I switched to a Hackintosh where I had a large case and didn't need the uh, external drives anymore. That thing served me very well. The only problem with it was the fan really sucked. So I put in my own uh, 40, millimeter, 40 millimeter Noctua fan. This particular one came with a ridiculous like LED clear stupid fan back here when I got it and it was in really bad shape. I know the Firewire port internally has some burning on it so I guess they fried the Firewire port. I'm not positive what happened there but uh, it takes just basically a 12 volt input. You got a VGA output USB 2, Ethernet, and two E-Serial ATA ports. And obviously this was the spot for the big fan unit. Inside, there's a power supply module with just uh, wiring running up to the two. Uh, they're, they're actually dual Serial ATA controller boards. Well, they're hot swap interface boards. And they just connect in, you can see here. They just connect in with uh, serial ATA cables down to the case, or down to the motherboard, but I've removed the serial ATA cables. Now, this thing does, like, eventually come out. I don't really um, have an easy method, because you have to, like, pop out these stupid um, little metal tab things down here. So there's no real, like, simple way to get this thing out. Although I do believe there's a single screw on one side. Yeah, there's a single screw over here. And then I think this whole thing kind of eventually comes out. Uh, let me take out these uh, hard drive caddies first. Okay, so here's the motherboard, and you can see there's these uh, external uh, serial ATA connectors, the eSATA ports, and they're they're just wedged in there. And oh, I think I know why this motherboard's not working. These caps are all bulging. Ah, well, I don't really care. This thing, I believe, is a Pentium four, or maybe you know what? It might actually be um, an Intel Atom. I'm not sure because it does use a. Uh, the four port power additional power connector so we'll see i'm not i'm not positive what this thing was it's one of the four caddies and they're, it's pretty nicely made you got a little vent here to get some airflow going and it's obviously not designed to take a two and a half inch drive since they weren't very common at the time and uh, it is metal with some plastic guides and it's got this little um, latch which is kind of funny because it came with like a plastic key now I don't know where the hell that thing went but uh, you just pop it in and it just opens this up so you know not terrible I've seen a lot worse uh, they're a little wobbly and unstable when they don't have a drive installed in them though This is where they're attaching the power supply and they, 
obviously only had two of these, so they have this screwed on metal plate with more. That seems really uh, dodgy, but I guess it works. <laughs> this is one of the two hot swap bay uh, boards, and it's your typical kind of dumb adapter. It looks like it's just got a little a local regulator, some caps, and uh, space for a Molex connector here, but they're using the side one and just SATA in, SATA out. Nothing special. They have a bunch of holes drilled for airflow, presumably. And that's it. These things uh, don't really do much. There's uh, a couple transistors on here, probably dealing with the hot swapping. This card was installed inside the unit, and it is a very, very tiny card. Uh, it's just a 32-bit PCI slot uh, card with a SATA link uh, SIL3. Uh, 114 which is a four port raid controller and uh, yeah just provides a four 1.5 uh, gigabit serial ATA port so it's not not anywhere close to full speed I mean they went to three uh, gigabit and all modern SATA drives are six so this thing's pretty out of date looks like they've got space for a boot ROM or something on that well regulator and some passos, but an incredibly basic card. There's practically nothing on it. It's super tiny. The uh, power supply is very compact, and it's um, it looks like it's reasonably powerful. It's probably a good like 50 watt or something like that. But uh, you know, you got big big inductors, lots of capacitors, nicely labeled uh, power supply rails. There's even a, a 0.1 inch header here that you can take off extra four, uh, five volt, 12 volt, etc. And you got all power devices. It's just it's all it's doing is taking the 12 volt and just switching it down to 3.3 and 5 volt, really. But uh, yeah, it's a nice little power supply, very uh, compact and very flat. And I like that there are no electrolytic capacitors on it, considering the state of the ones on the board. The cable is just a standard ATX power supply with the 12 volt CPU power. And it just runs to these uh, smaller pin headers, which are getting the power from the board. And then uh, we also have these two Molex connectors, which go to the SATA expanders. Not much luck finding any information on the motherboard. It seems to just be an embedded motherboard made by some random company so we've got this big heat sink presumably covering the north and south bridge or maybe um, a GPU and the, the uh, platform controller and then we've got the CPU and our nice little fan uh, parallel ETA which is not used 32-bit PCI slot which had that card in it there's a firewire port here and you can see the damage down here uh, I'm pretty sure when I first got this, I determined that it was just the firewire port that was blown up by whatever the hell happened. And uh, two memory card slots. I think these are half gig or one gig. These are two gig. Not bad. Four gigs total. Uh, this looks like a DDR, regular DDR. Hmm. It might be DDR too, but I think it's just regular DDR. And, uh, oh, no, wait, I think, yeah, I think these are DDR2. Anyway, not, <laughs> not that important. And, uh, let's see if we can get this heat sink off. Ah, yes, the signature horrible thermal grease. Uh, I actually put this stuff on it because I bought a tube of like really generic thermal grease because I found that whenever I was doing teardowns of stuff, I actually had to put the thing back together just to film something. And I'm like, I'm not wasting good, you know, Arctic silver on this kind of stuff. So I, uh, I bought this like really cheap thermal grease and it's quite terrible and it's already on me. But uh, let me um, find some rubbing alcohol and get that crap off. The CPU is a 1.6 gigahertz Pentium M, which is kind of what like the modern core chips, well, previously modern core chips were based on. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's actually not too bad. It's like a better Pentium 4. And we've also got the controllers, North and South Bridge, 
You have these lovely defective caps. Yeah, the uh, the VGA port is being driven probably from this controller. The, the south bridge probably is onboard VGA. And we've got the two serial ATA ports, which are driving the external, the e-serial ATA ports. And just a lot more bad caps. <laughs> Pretty basic motherboard. You can see that they've um, got provisions for like PS2 ports and stuff like that, more USB but they obviously chose not to use them on this particular one since you don't really need them. And uh, I think I'll switch to the macro lens, take a better look at that damage, since I'm not 100% sure what um, blew up there. I think it's a little transistor that blew up. But uh, you gotta love how they went, okay, so we're gonna make a half decent board. Let's go ahead and put some solid caps and some crap <laughs> electrolytics. So yeah, what good did that do? You know, unless you're doing them all in nice solid caps, what the hell's the point? I mean, <laughs> if any caps die, the thing stops working. Uh, on the bottom, it looks like it's just some support chips. This is probably, um, it's probably stuff like the real-time clock and serial port, that kind of stuff. That looks like the remains of a diode. So I'm guessing something got the polarity wrong and it blew up. The problem with this board is that they just cheaped out on capacitors. I mean, they put fuses on stuff, it's decently laid out. It, they just cheaped out on this stuff and you end up with a board that's dead. There's one bodge over here on the magnetics for the ethernet port. Although it may technically be a mod due to the fact that this board doesn't have all the components. It's possible that when they omit some of the other stuff, they have to add this cap. So it may not be like a, uh, a design flaw. It could simply be something that's known that they have to add this capacitor when they don't install the PS2 ports and blah, 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 blah. So uh, it could just be something simple, but that's the only uh, real error I've seen on this board. I always kind of like these uh, mobile sockets with the little screw lock. With the screw turned, you can just pop that CPU right out. Yeah. One of the older style ones that uses pins. Pretty unusual now. Well, even though it looks like it's kind of just botched together with random parts, it was actually a half decent NAS. I mean, especially uh, externally with the nice drive bays and stuff. It's not at, at the same level as the RAID controller thing I had. That thing was really nice and it just seemed like it was really well integrated. I mean, it was much simpler, but it just seemed like a much more um, quality product. This thing, you know, even ignoring the bad caps, it just seems like it's kind of thrown together and it doesn't seem as elegant. And unfortunately, when I got this thing, it had no drive. So I'd, I'm not positive what operating system it came with, like whether or not they used their own one or it just came with a um, copy of Windows. Mm -hmm. 